Okay, yeah, what he's you, saying you, in you English. Fear this man. Oh my God, yes. I mean, it's two trade, almost two trillion dollar company. Yeah. What he's saying is, look, Nvidia continues to advance things. Uh, you can go with Nvidia; it's expensive. You can go with your own, make your own. It's really expensive because you got to update every year, or you can use us, and we're the bargain. And it, He's right. I mean, these are things that are cut and dry. Like, if we had Jensen here, we'd say, yeah, man of the year at Financial Times. Yes. Um, if we had Jensen here, we'd say, yeah, well, that's you, know, you can go with him if you want to. But what happens when we uh, unveil the Vera Rubin? By the way, people aren't talking about the Vera Rubin or the Richard Feynman. These chips are what's going to make it so that they reason. And remember, once they get the power to reason, which right now they have the power to compile, they get the power to reason what that's when... They will replace us unless we. Yes, do a lot and we're going to talk about the macro dynamics and impact on employment. Oh, Jim, at the same the time, Goldman guy, the new Costin. Yep, I'd be so bullish. I was like, I had to rein in my entire. I'd be like, curb your enthusiasm, partner. Yeah, Goldman have goes some to respect for wood. Seventy six hundred for next year. Yeah. At the same time, Jim, we got the president uh, with this new AI EO, basically one rule, hold, withholding federal funding for any state that tries to implement their own rules. I just love that because it's not in the Constitution at all. Uh, once again, what you think that the attorney general is going to say, you know, Mr. President, that's not in the Constitution. It must be great to be president when you kind of just say what you want to say and the Constitution doesn't constrain you. Now, it doesn't constrain you because there's not someone saying you really that's not really part of the Commerce Clause, Mr. President. Well, I, I, I think the courts will constrain you and they have constrained. Well, him. they do have a couple of guys in that court. They got that guy Gorsuch. He's, he, he's like a thinking Republican. I, I would, not that they're not. Thinking, it's just, he's not an ideologue. He's looking at case by case, and that's the, your worst nightmare for a president who's trying to get whatever, whatever way he wants. Right. Meantime, uh, NVIDIA, there's a report out today uh, considering ramping production of the H200 to meet demand in China, which apparently there's plenty of. Well, that's my story, and they finally went with it. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I mean, I've been saying this, and people are like, no, Jim, didn't you know that they didn't want it? Like, OK, so do you think that Jensen Wong says, I'm going to bargain with the president, put all my chips on the table, give them 25 percent surcharge because the Chinese don't want it? <laughs> I, I mean, you know, J Jensen's, a, it, you don't get your company to be a five trillion dollar company by being stupid. I, I, Jensen has the customers. Oh, by the way, and then we see that ByteDance, well, they have to check with the government. They are the government. That's the whole point. Yes. Then the other wrinkle, Jim, um, our data centers, uh, this er city in Arizona, a Phoenix suburb. Uh, rejects a data center. Evercore yesterday with a report on how MAGA opposition to AI in general and sort of progressive worries about data center, energy costs and all that are combining. And they think next year there might be some policy speed bumps in AI well, development. It could happen, but there's them. But uh, Patty Poppy, who runs, I think, does a great job at pg and &E, has done unbelievable work, which shows you how much the cost of electricity goes down when a data center comes. Unassailable, great work by a person who is so much more rigorous than these analysts. Comes down for whom? For the, the townspeople. Well, why would that happen? Because they produce, these guys pay more. They pay more than their fair share. Then low, they subsidize the rest of the town. Then why would utility costs in data center heavy states be up 30 percent? Because those states did not negotiate correctly. And they should go in and say, listen, you need to, we're, we're charging you more. They, they wanted the business so badly they gave it away. That's not what Patty Poppy wants to do. Some of these places just thought, you know what, what a boon for our country, but a boon for our state. But, but they forgot that you can't have them take advantage of your rate payers. You have to you have to shift it. It would have all done it, by the way. Right. But your 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 point is that the utility rates are like doubling CPI in large part because of the strains well, on the they, grid they for have, now. They have to go to the to the commissions and say, listen, we think that this is unfair. The commissions will go for them. The commissions are, take a little more time. But that's what will happen. I think one third of the data centers will not be built. One third of the data centers yeah. Will not be built. Will not be our built. Press releases, our press releases. I, this is uh, some work I did with Rusty Brazil from RBN uh, because they keep track of the of the actual amount of equipment that's being bought, and it's just not nearly as great as the the press releases. Uh, is, is that good or bad? <laughs> well, I think that I, I I don't want them to have to spend less money on on energy because it's dead weight loss for yeah, them. Yeah. And we look. I think that the the peak was when. Uh, what Microsoft went to open Three Mile Island. I mean that, and then you start hearing about what data centers in, in space. 
uh, you know, just cool it with the data center story. We're not, <laughs> let's see how hot these these really do burn yeah. the next go around. No, there was a lot of conjecture this week about how do you train an IT specialist to be an astronaut? What happens to motherboards when they undergo radiation? Well, this is like when the, someone said if everyone adopts the GOP dash ones, it's going to be great for the airlines because they won't have as much weight on it. <laughs> I mean, you know, honestly, we have to. We had it, that discussion yeah, once. Yeah, no, it was like a substantive discussion about lunacy. Actually, we have some uh, more detail from Oracle. Seema Modi joining us with a statement from the company. Seema. Uh, Kelly, we were just talking about this story. Oracle spokesperson is refuting the Bloomberg story that Oracle is delaying some of the data centers it is developing for OpenAI. Uh, the spokesperson telling CNBC there have been no delays to any sites required to meet our contractual commitments and, on, and all milestones remain on track. We remain fully aligned with OpenAI and confident in our ability to execute against both our contractual commitments and future expansion plans. This is in regards to Oracle's $300 billion deal with OpenAI. There was that story earlier today that the company was delaying some of the standing up of data centers for OpenAI. Again, Oracle coming out and saying that is wrong and that they remain fully aligned with OpenAI. You are seeing the stock move here real time. In response to this uh, commentary from Oracle, stock now off the lows of the session and down about 2.8 percent. We're going to stay on this story here. I would also bring up Oracle's credit default swaps that have been in a way loosely correlated to the performance of the stock, Kelly. Uh, you'll see that come down as well. Yeah. Seema, thank you very much. And Tim, a final word. I mean, is this a company in particular where you think people might move to the sidelines if they had to select one out of the trade? Well, I, I think a company that moves their capex from 5% of revenues to maybe 70% of revenues is part of the story here. That's a big uh, move. Uh, um, I, I don't think you've priced in at the valuation here on Oracle. I think it's actually interesting because it, it's priced X any AI. Um, having said that, I think this is the epicenter of the debt story. And, and I think you can be sidelined here. But I, I know that there's a lot of investors out there. And I, I think repositioning into next year, especially a shakeout in this trade, there are many folks that do want to buy this dip. Hmm. I, I don't think people are running too far away. Well, I think the, the key difference is just the difficulty that China's had in making them. Uh, today, uh, China can produce relatively small volumes of AI chips. You know, best estimates are that the U.S. plus its partners in Korea and Taiwan are going to produce many, many times the number of AI chips that China can next year and uh, for the foreseeable future. And so China's really struggled to ramp up its manufacturing here, uh, which is why the government's pouring more money in every single year to try to build up its ecosystem. But it's also why the U.S. has a kind of unique advantage uh, in this space, because there's not much that we can manufacture that China can't. Uh, but AI chips are uh, a unique uh, example of this. And they also happen to be this critical driver of uh, technological progress, which is why I think we've got to be very careful uh, when deciding which countries and which companies we sell these to. I think the question uh, should be, what can China produce domestically and at what volume? If China can build something at home, there's no reason to stop our firms from selling that product. Well, to if them. they can build it at home, they're not going to buy ours. Oh, that's it. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. And the reason they want to buy uh, these H200 chips is because they can't build better. enough at home. Exactly. Well, well, I think that assumes that China is not going to try to become self-sufficient on its own. And the reality is in every other sector of the economy and including in even lower end chips, China's racing towards self-sufficiency. So there's, I think, no world in which we sell them a bit more. And Chairman Xi decides, oh, I don't need to be self-sufficient in this product, despite that I've been trying to do so. But they're for the getting last some decade. of those chips illegally through other countries anyway. They're can, certainly can we, getting Can we some. really shut it off? I, I think it would be unrealistic to think you're going to completely shut it off. But the fact that you've got big, successful Chinese tech firms relying on disassembling servers, smuggling them into China, reassembling them, shows how dependent they are.